I saw like in 93 the Canadians uh, winning the Stanley Cup against uh, well, the LA Kings. It was, uh, it was great. I was, uh, I was five years old turning six. Uh, it was great. Like, uh, I was like, okay, I want to I wanna play in the NHL. I think I was six years old when my mom took me to the first practice. I lived here all my life on the farm. We have a dairy farm. And you know, you always hope that maybe one day that you'd be the one on TV in the NHL. It was always a dream that you chased. They're so cute. They have this big dream in their head, and his dream was to pay, play for the Montreal Canadiens and come home and farm in between games. They're so cute at that age. Probably like every kid, uh, you play on the, in the streets, and uh, you always say, "Well, I'm uh, Guy Lafleur," or uh, you know. When I was a younger kid, I was always a little bit a uh, step ahead of the guys playing in the local leagues, and uh, kind of just when I had that little step on guys, started to love the game a lot. Being one of the players, my team always relied on, and uh, just loved the game. That was my dream ever since I was a young guy. So my name is uh, Trevor Parks, I'm right winger from Montreal Juniors, and my favorite player is Ryan Gessler. The Quebec Major Junior Hockey League is important. It's the best league in, in Quebec, that's for sure. There's a lot of really good players, and that's where the NHL gets the majority of their players. I mean, it's a very, very good league. Yaroslav Alak, I played against him in junior. Uh, Sidney Crosby, I played against him in junior. Vlasic, I played with him in, uh, in uh, Quebec. The coaches are demanding, uh, the fans are demanding, uh, it's the best referees, uh, best players, so uh, you got to be at the top of your game, that's for sure. We practice every day, it needs to be a, a commitment and an everyday commitment. Twice a week they have a, a morning workout before practice. So we'll work out from 8 to 9 o'clock and then uh, usually on the ice every day from 10 to 12 and then on a game day. Uh, you're at the rink two and a half hours before and you have a morning skate in the morning so your whole day is at the rink so we spend a lot of time here. Yeah we had more games, more travel like I was playing in uh, Enmar in New York and uh, we had games in Texas and everything and we were doing all that by bus. You can never have an off shift or an off off period off this, you can't ever, you just got to make sure you win all your battles and do everything right because there's always going to be someone watching. If you want to make the NHL you, mean, you pretty much have to get drafted into the juniors at 16, make the team at 16 you know and you have to be one of the best right out of the gate. The victory happens when 10,000 hours of work meets one moment of opportunity. And that's the reality. People who see things on television forget that there's thousands of hours of work that goes into this. Uh, the percentage is about 2 to 5 percent probably that plays in the NHL. 1 percent. 1 percent make the NHL or even just get drafted. I think it's less than 1 percent. I'd say 0.0001% of people make it. But we don't really care about it. We don't really care about the odds of making it. So I decided to give it a shot. Just kind of know that one day, hopefully it'll all pay off. And hoping that it's going to pay off one day, it's just let all this work hopefully come together for it. The challenge is that there's just so many people who want to do it. And the reality is not many people make it. I mean, I always hoped I would, but, but I mean, I knew I had a pretty good sense of what it would take and knowing that it would be a real long shot if I ever, even just to make, a, make the junior team. I played, uh, I signed with uh, the Elmira Jackals in the, uh, the East Coast Hockey League. See guys like uh, Canadian guys that, uh, that were there that have like 31, 32 years old with no degree, no education. And then you wonder why, what they're going to do after their career because in the East Coast you're not making millions like in the NHL when you're making like 30, 35 grand a year. You're one of the better, like best played player in the, in the league. I didn't want that kind of life without like knowing what I'm going to do the year after and everything.
Well, yeah, I was drafted in 98 by the Ottawa Senators in the first round. Uh, played three years in the minors, got called up once with uh, the LA Kings. They put me in net, there was, uh, I'd say, uh, 9.50 to go. And uh, I ended up playing about 2.40 because they kept pulling me to put an extra forward to get an extra goal. So uh, I played about 2 minutes, 40 seconds. <laughs> that was my uh, NHL action. There was no one particular time where I was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm not going to make it. I mean, it slowly, it, you know, it, it came on me slowly. I mean, you're disappointed that you didn't make it, but at the same time, you know, it wasn't the end of the world. It was just a relief to know that, you know, what I expected to do was going to happen. Well, now I'm working home on the farm uh, with my father and two brothers, looking at taking it over the farm someday with them. As we said, it would have been nice if one of them had made it. It'd be lots of money they could bring back to the farm because farming is not something that's a big money maker. It's kind of lifestyle more than, uh, you know, it's a way of life more than than making a big living at it. You know, you're comfortable, but you're not uh, rich. <laughs> Still playing in uh, junior, double A in the shoot. It's a local team. It's not as competitive, but um, it's it's still fun, and you know I'm doing it to have fun. And this is my last year, and once this year's over, I'm probably gonna call it call it quits for for hockey. Uh, I was kind of lost, to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't have much school. Um, I didn't have the most money in the world. I mean, yes, I played hockey, but uh, I wasn't a millionaire, that's for sure. Uh, you see who your real friends are when it's hard, when you come back and uh, uh, all those people that said, uh, when it's over, come and see me, we'll take care of you. And you don't see them anymore. So, uh, yeah, it was kind of it was kind of hard. Don't quit school for, uh, for that. Like a lot of guys in junior didn't go to school because they wanted to train and in order to be drafted and put everything in hockey but and they didn't get drafted and now they're, they're wondering what uh, what they're doing in their lives they don't they don't really know and they becomes like what we call a bit like hockey bombs that like they just go all around the u.s with uh, with uh, minor uh, minor pro uh, i know like i won't make a living playing hockey anymore i don't have the regret to say oh i should have i should have done it so i did it and i uh, came back to university and i think it's uh, was a great choice uh, last year I was uh, draft eligible and ranked for the draft, but I didn't get drafted. And then uh, I got a walk-on tryout with Detroit in the summer. And I signed there at the camp this year. Big opportunity for me because there's a lot of good hockey players that are out there just as good as me. Just Sometimes you just get your opportunity, and I was lucky enough to get an opportunity and take advantage of it. So uh, that's one thing I'm going to do is some guys may not have that opportunity to be signed to an NHL club, so now that I have that, I just don't want to don't want to pass that up. I have maybe one chance ever, so I just got to try to do everything I possibly can to get up to that big club one day. Uh,